Hello everyone, I'm Simone, technical specialist from Kiloview. Today we are going to look at the MG300 V2, the flagship media gateway from Kiloview. We are going to see the web UI, its main feature, and some real world scenario usage. Let's go! Alright, this is the splash screen of our web UI. Put username and password and press login. The first time you will log in into the MG300 V2, this pop-up windows will appear. Just saying that if you're using the video preview, your GPU will be stressed, so take care about that. Okay, this is the main web UI of the MG300 V2. As you can see on the left side, there's a source preview, and on the right side, there's the output in here, if we press the down arrow, we can decide through the two outputs. If we want to see both the outputs simultaneously, we can just tap the X on the preview and we have the two outputs side by side. Let's try now to add some sources into our preview row. I want to add some NDIHX signals, so I got on the bottom here where's the discover button I'm going to select my NDI HX signals and press add we can close this window and for example right now I will drag and drop the signal into the preview window after some seconds you will be able to see the preview of the image video you can notice here we have only some image if we want to have a smoother preview we can toggle here the button image to video and you will see the video will go much more smoother you can preview up to 16 signals simultaneously in the mg300 v2 if I now select, for example, this 16 row configuration, I can put the same signal or even different signal into each of the windows here and preview up to 16 feeds simultaneously. Okay, let's start with something really basic. Let's put our preview signals into one of our baseband outputs. For example, let's select HDMI 1. On the cogwheel here, you will see there's some parameters we can choose. We can change the resolution, so every output comes with an up and down scaler. We can change the HDMI color space. We can also change the audio format, sample rate. And here you see there's a mainstream coding parameters and substream coding parameters we will see later on in this video. Of course we can also add overlays and backgrounds and have the OSD superposition to change and add text or other things like date and time. Alright so now we can drag and drop from the preview window to the output window and have our NDIHX converted into HDMI baseband connection. We can also send the same inputs to the SDI outputs if we want to. Basically we can send everything on both the three physical output of the MG300. Moreover, we can create different window arrangement. If we click here where the three dots are located, we can change and add modes. So basically we can create multiple window setup like picture in picture, two windows, up to nine windows because the MG300 V2 can decode simultaneously different flows of signals up to nine at the time. Let's for example put three windows mode and add our NDIHX signals. As you can see, every window here, I can modify position, the scale, and everything 
in order to arrange my best choice of workflow. Here, I can add also backgrounds. For example, I can add this one and have all those three signals. Let's put a name and save this composition. Press OK. To activate the possibility of using this mode, just click on here and you will see it will turn green. So press OK. Right now you see something as changed here. We can select those three windows setup. If I press it, you will see does the background and other two windows not populated yet. So I'm gonna add this two other NDI's HX signal here. Okay, from now on I can have this composition output from the baseband connections of the HDMI 1, HDMI 2 and SDI. Of course, I can also use the second output if I wish to, to have different kind of outputs. For example, if I select the HDMI 2 here, you will see it will be disabled on the output 1. But I can still, for example, send the second ingest NDI HX to the second output only into the HDMI 2. You will notice in every ingested signal there is this uh, red icon. This stands for the audio. If we activate the audio, we can then hear it through the baseband connection. And if we go in the mix control, we can basically select the volume for each ingested sources and mixes the way we wish better. At the bottom of each output, we can also select the analog one by the 3.5 millimeter as a jack, so we can de-embed the audio from the ingest sources into analog one. Let's try to add some other audio video over IP signal. In the source tab, if we press add, you can clearly see we can decode many types of signals like RTSP, RTMP, RTMPS, RTP, UDP, HTTP, HTTPS, SRT, and DI. And we can also use the MG300B2 as an RTMP media server. The media server feature actually allows you to treat the MG300V2 as an hosting media server for RTMP ingested stream. You just have to open one port you will design from here into your own router or firewall directly into the local IP address of the machine. And after that, you can send RTMP streams directly to the MG300V2 and just change the session ID name. For example, if we have to send multiple signals, like four sources, the first one will be called 1, the second will be called 2, and so on. For example, here in the full address, you see these strings with a local IP address of our MG300B2 slash the session ID name. Of course, if we want to stream across a VAN network, this IP address has to be changed with a static IP address of your own ISP provider. And you have to pull forwarding the exact port here to the local area network of the MG300. This is really convenient if we want to monitor many signals at once and just remember one IP address and one port. By the way, let's try to add an SRT source right now. Give it a name, choose the connection mode, in my case I'm gonna use the caller mode, put the public IP address, select the ports of your ingested SRT stream, select also the latency of the stream. In my case I'm gonna use also the stream ID, so in the advanced setting, you can just click display and add the stream ID. All right, now we can press OK and our stream get populated in the source tab. I can now push this into the second output, for example, and you will see from yellow will turn blue and then will turn green when the connection will be stable to the MG300B2. You can notice here in the web UI 
I don't have any preview at all. But if we click here on the status tab, you can clearly see the video codec selected is H.265. MG300V2 can't preview H.265 format ingested sources, but can still output through the baseband connection and the IP stream. Now I will show you the powerful feature of the stream service in the MG300V2. Basically, the MG300V2 is able to ingest one of the sources or one of the outputs and transcode that into a different format. Let's give it a try. If I press to add publishing points, I will give a name and press OK. You will see that I can select the source, every of our ingested source as a mainstream or substream the one we had found before into this two section where we can change bitrate, the scaling, the frame rate, the gob size and the audio source to be on or off. So I can select for example this SRT feed and transcode it into something else, for example NDI HX. So if we go into service we can add the stream service select from the drop-down menu NDI HX, giving a name and press OK. At this point I can open a studio monitor from the NDI tools and you will see we will be able to see the SRT stream even if it's been ingested in H.265. Here is in the studio monitor right click select the MG300 V2 and select the channel we just have created. And here we go, we are basically transcoding the SRT feed into an NDI HX reachable by any computers, a workstation or hardware device in our local area network. This is a really powerful feature, especially for remote production, because for example you can ingest multiple sources of our bonding P-series encoder, transcode back to NDI HX and avoiding the usage of any USB or PCI Express capture device into your computer. We can of course do exactly the same with different type of signals. For example, I can send this NDI HX signal into one of my outputs, select the IP stream and transcode this into RTMP to send this through YouTube or Facebook. So once I selected the NDI HX, put it into the output, enable the IP stream, I can go to the stream service, select my output one in this example for my ingested source, go into the service, select add stream service, giving a name like YouTube, and copy and paste URL and stream key. Remember to put the forward slash in between the URL and the stream key. Once you've done it, you can press OK and as you can see here, the stream is just starting. I will show you the YouTube page right now. Here you can see we are sending our output 1 with the NDI HX transcoded to RTMP to YouTube. We can also do it this simultaneously to Facebook at the same time. Just add another stream service with the name and now insert the URL and stream key of Facebook. And now you can see we are also streamed the same NDI checks transcoded into RTMP to Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. This makes the MG300V2 a really Swiss knife tool to just create, stream and recast every kind of audio video over IP signals to any other destination you might need. I hope you like this video and stay tuned for more to come. You can always reach us at www.kilovy.com or send us an email at support at Bye!